your attention please studying the class today i would like to talk to you about the next topic in your unit 2 that is cloud computing actually before we can understand the concept of cloud computing there are several interconnected concepts which have to be clarified these interconnected com concepts are very similar to each other still they are very distinct from each other these concepts are grid computing cluster computing and cloud computing actually your unit 2 talks about cloud computing however cloud computing is only one way of implementing parallel and distributed computing and therefore in order to clarify the concepts behind cloud computing i would like to first talk about the concepts of parallel and distributed computing the concepts if they are to be understood in a very simple language we can say that in parallel computing several processors work simultaneously on the same task practically they have similar or identical resources and the job is also common however the job might be sometimes partitioned among the various processors on the other hand when we say distributed computing there the stress is more on distribution distribution of either the resources or the tasks so what can be the resources resources could be a hardware resource like a printer or a scanner or a microphone or a loudspeaker or these could be software resources like drivers or certain applications so in parallel computing the focus is more on <coughs> working parallelly on the same task whereas in distributed computing we are more focusing on distributing either the resources or the various parts of the task so that's how parallel and distributed computing both are very very useful the most successful example of parallel computing is provided in what we call cluster computing <coughs> in cluster computing multiple machines each having its own processor they are connected on a very high speed network and they are all given the same task on which they work simultaneously practically this means that all the processors are practically working like a single entity so it becomes a supercomputer in fact cluster computing has been used to create a virtual super computer without really having one because the number of super computers in the world are very few the largest super computer in the world exists in china in other countries also a few super computers are there they are computers with huge processing power and humongous memory resources but all the same the number of super computers in the world are very limited however the number of smaller computers micro computers micro processor based computers are many more they are in billions so instead of manufacturing or creating a supercomputer if we can form a cluster 
closely knit cluster of a large number of machines then they can function as a supercomputer which can be even more powerful than the largest supercomputer which exists in china on this i would like to give you a very interesting information that uh, in china the largest supercomputer exists and a better performance has been achieved by a cluster of computers which was formed elsewhere so this is what we call cluster computing on the other hand when we use the concept of grid computing grid computing philosophy is entirely different in grid computing again the configuration externally looks similar because a large number of smaller machines are being connected together on a network however in this case it is more a focus on distributed computing than on parallel computing the chinese supercomputer system which has a name called tian that was i mean a bigger system was created by using 6.2 million machines which were running on the open source berkeley open infrastructure for network computing and it was able to give a performance which was large, which was faster than the chinese supercomputer the second concept which focuses more on distributed computing is called the grid computing grid computing has also been used very successfully and i would like to tell you that there was one experiment in europe which was conducted on the cern network cern cern network which was used for a very challenging scientific experiment in which the god particle was discovered that was done using a grid computer a very large number of millions of smaller computers <coughs> were connected in a grid they shared their tasks and they were able to help in performing that experiment <coughs> grid computing has been successfully used in very large computing intensive applications such as protein folding problem in uh, uh, in science there is some very big problem called uh, protein folding which deals with how the molecules of the protein they fold themselves it has also been used in several financial modeling softwares it has been used in earthquake simulation and also in climate and weather forecasting because these are applications where a huge processing power is needed so a single small machine will not be able to do other option is to go for a supercomputer which are not so easily accessible so cluster computing and grid computing solve such problems so having talked that now let us see what do we understand by cloud computing cloud computing is the easiest to implement among all this because in cloud computing we are connecting the machines not on a dedicated network necessarily but on a cloud that means through the conventional internet we are connecting the computers and these computers can provide a platform as a service an infrastructure as a service or a software as a service so three models are available infrastructure as a service iaas platform as a service paas and software as a service saas big cloud platforms like microsoft azure or amazon web services 
or Google Cloud Platform and many others. These provide all these kinds of services at different costs because the basic financial model in cloud computing is pay as you go. That means it is a subscription model. Depending on the network resources that you are using, depending on the processing power or the memory size that you are utilizing, your payment also changes. So think of a platform like Amazon Web Services, AWS. You could host your entire website there. You could in fact develop a website using it as a platform and then host the website there using it as a software as a service and through that website you could provide any service for example you could provide uh, a e-commerce website or a payment gateway all these things can be implemented using the cloud computing basically all these they are applications of electronic communication. That is the foundation for all these concepts of grid computing, cluster computing as well as cloud computing. The underlying technology is electronic communication or we can say digital communication. And digital communication is certainly preferable to the earlier models of analog communication because digital communication is comparatively more accurate, accurate in the sense it is more error free and it is instant, of course analog communication is also instant but here the processes of uh, uh, error detection and error correction are faster and more effective in digital communication. So that way digital communication is the preferred mode of communication today. In earlier years, the entertainment industry, electronic entertainment industry like TV and audios, they were mostly depending on analog communication. Whereas uh, telecommunications, they were mostly depending on digital communications and to a smaller extent on analog communication as in landline telephones. But today, if you look at the scenario of communications in the world, practically entertainment, computing and uh, telecommunications, they are all utilizing the same digital communication infrastructure. The reasons are very obvious because here accuracy is more and uh, error detection is possible. If the error is detected, you don't have to send the entire file again. You could just send a few packets which have not been received properly and then the communication could be reassembled at the destination end and you could get the perfect result. So due to that, all these three different streams of communication that is communication, computing and um, uh, telecommunication, computing and entertainment, they are all practically on digital communication platform today. In technology, we call this concept a convergence. It's a convergence of all the technologies towards one technology. Of course, this, is, this concept is not the same as market convergence. Market convergence is also a very great concept, but that is in marketing management. When uh, different uh, sellers, they aggregate on a single platform, then that is what we mean by market convergence. The examples of market convergence are also many. Look at sites like OYO, which is a hotel booking site. So there, you don't necessarily visit the website of a single hotel or a single hotel chain like ITC. There you are able to see all the hotels and resorts which are available on a single platform and there you are able to book your room or book your resort or book your suite there. 
and uh, other good examples of that are websites like book my show which is for the entertainment and make my trip which is for the travel industry so these things they are the application of market convergence but when we talk of grid computing cloud computing and cluster computing they are platforms which lead to more of technological convergence so that's how the difference is in electronic communications i have already told you the benefits in digital communication there are several great technologies which uh, are utilized and uh, i would say the three main the, the three main aspects of digital communication are modulation multiplexing and switching so when we go to your unit number 3 that starts with networking and networking is again nothing but digital communication so in that modulation is involved multiplexing is involved and switching is involved and uh, switching as you know already or you must have uh, read somewhere earlier that switching in digital communication is of three types circuit switching message switching as well as packet switching on the internet most of the time what we are doing is packet switching whereas in uh, uh, voice calls either on the analog network or on the digital network still what is used is circuit switching like when i am uh, making a voice call to someone then during the for the duration of the call there is a circuit existing between the subscriber telephone which is calling and the subscriber telephone which is answering the call so the for that limited time a work circuit is existing so there we are using circuit switching but when you are using messaging messaging would be on a sms platform or on uh, facebook messenger or on uh, uh, whatsapp messenger there there is no circuit existing like that there we are using message switching so as a single block the entire message is sent the entire message will be either received or not received there is nothing in between i mean there is no chance that half the message will be received and the remaining half will not be received there is no such possibility there so message switching also has got certain examples because there are certain times when we can't afford or we can't tolerate half the message or partial message one very good example in this is the reading of a debit card or a credit card by a card reader machine it could be a card which is swiped in the machine in the card reader machine or it could be a card which is contactless card which is just tapped on the machine whatever it may be but then this works not on circuit switching this works purely on message switching because here we don't want the messages to be truncated or partial messages are absolutely useless so when we tap a card on the card reader machine the card id card particulars and the amount they have to go as a single message they go to the server of the bank and from there also if everything is okay then a single message comes that the payment has been received so here obviously you can see that a partial message will not at all be tolerated so here we use the message switching if a otp is sent by the bank server fails to arrive 
there is no chance that you will get a partial OTP. You will have to ask for a new OTP by clicking on resend the OTP. Here we are working on message switching. However, for most of the other applications like streaming of video, streaming of movies, streaming of songs or voice calls which are on voice on internet protocol or on emails, here the preferred switching method is the packet switching method. Packet switching method is much more efficient in this sort of scenario because here the entire communication or the entire message or the entire call is not sent as a single block. Here what we do is we divide it into small sized packets. Now that small size could be as small as 1 kilobyte or, or even 10 kilobyte but not very very large. I mean it will never be in terms of megabytes and terabytes, impossible. We never make packets like that. So for a video which is uh, say uh, uh, 15 minutes video, there could be something like a million packets which are divided and sent. And these million packets are properly numbered and uh, sent as a train of packets, one behind the other, one behind the other. They pass through all the nodes in the network, not necessarily on the same route. Why the route has to be changed? So please try to understand that the network configuration, the network health, the network status is always dynamic. When they are communicating from one node to a very remote node in a different geographical location in a different continent perhaps, the packets have to travel over the network through various nodes and some of these nodes do suffer a breakdown at times. The breakdown could be because the router is bad or the power supply at that node has failed, anything can happen. See, uh, life is very uncertain and life in a network is still more uncertain. More uncertain than our personal life also. So, the configuration of the network or the status of the network in terms of which nodes are alive and which nodes are not alive, this is always changing. So, it's quite possible that the first 500 packets, they go through one route and then that route becomes no longer available. That was the most, that was the shortest route. So it was preferred originally. But now, at this moment of time, when that route is not available, the next shortest route, which is available, has to be utilized. So, in packet switching, our packets are following different routes over the network via different nodes and then this has the benefit that at the destination if we find that one or a few packets have not arrived then only those packets can be requested again from the sending node in that network. This need not be the originating node always. This can even be an intermediate node. That intermediate node will be much closer and therefore the error correction also becomes comparatively faster. Practically it has been seen that when we are using packet switching for larger chunks of information then it definitely gives a much better performance than either circuit switching or message switching. So this is how in digital communications we are able to maintain a very systematic environment for digital communications. And in uh, grid computing, cluster computing as well as in cloud computing, this is the foundation. So we can say that the digital communication technology thus provides us the foundation for all those three big concepts 
which are involved in this that is cloud computing grid computing and cluster computing <coughs> actually within a machine the communication is always parallel by within the machine i mean when we are communicating data from the processor to the cache memory or processor to the resident storage memory then necessarily the communication is parallel that means we provide actually flat cables these flat cables may contain several conductors say 256 conductors or 512 conductors and on that a large number of bits can be parallelly conveyed so it's very very fast computation very very fast communication of data within a single stand alone machine but when we are doing digital communication machine to machine this method is not feasible because if we are connecting two computers which are in remote locations connecting them through flat cables is very very inconvenient and not desirable in the sense that if there is a failure of the cable at some intermediate location identifying the fault and repairing the fault is going to be a herculean task so there we mostly depend upon serial communication where you are actually having just a duplex channel that means two wires for receiving and two for sending they may be wires or just a concept of wire is being used they could be even radio channels they could even be channels on the wifi or channels on the bluetooth also still as far as the concept is concerned we can say two wires for receiving and two for transmitting although in bluetooth you know there are no wires being used it is all wireless communication so when we are doing that kind of communication it is more of serial communication so in serial communication it is uh, very necessary that uh, the bits are sent in the correct sequence and then they are received in the correct sequence and then they have to be assembled in the form of the total communication which is required to be received so that's how in a network by using serial communication and packet switching we are able to implement the concepts of cloud computing and grid computing so today's class i think i can stop here we will continue the topic in the